What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about everything we can do to maximize our item drop rate for farming rare smithing texts and rare skills. Now, while rare smithing texts are something you may be familiar with from the original Neo, one of the new additions are rare skills that we can pick up. In the Kusari Gama tree, I have a follow-up to the Whirlwind attack with Second Wind. Uh, over in the Spear Tree, I have Triple Threat, which is a triple stab move that's super flashy. And a bunch of these rare skills can also drop in addition to texts, making farming more important than ever if you really want to maximize, you know, just everything you have available to you. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at everything we can do to increase our chances. And the first up actually happens in the Shrine. Under Make Offering, we can receive different Kodama Blessings. In particular, the Hunter Blessing here that 25% increase to drop rate of materials, that will affect all the smithing texts that we're going after. So if you're gonna be farming skills or new armor or new weapons or texts for any of this stuff, 100% make sure you have the Hunter Blessing on. It's also important to note that you need to apply this every new region you're in. If you put on the Hunter Blessing right now while we're in the Awakening region, and then you hop on over to say Soaring region, you might not have that blessing on because each region has its own Kodamas. Uh, outside of that, I also want to point out a unique skill we can pick up in the Shiftling Tree. This is Mercenary Strike. This is going to increase our item drop rate by an extra 10% when we're defeating an enemy with a specific skill. And what this means is if we go into skill customization, I have it right here on Urgency, and basically what it comes down to is if Urgency is the killing blow on an enemy, my item drop rate goes up an extra 10% on top of everything else that I have going right now. So. Both very nice things to keep in mind. Now moving on to our gear, perhaps the most important thing is going to be having a Kudama Bowl. This is going to enhance that Hunter Blessing by an additional 29%. We can also roll both, both Luck and Item Drop Rate on this as well. As for our gear, I would suggest rolling Item Drop Rate on all four of your pieces. As you can see 4.4% on these four, or these three, and then on the chest I have 5.4. Now if you're really trying to squeeze out everything you can, the Rightful Eccentric set, this you can get another 20 luck out of. But one thing I want to point out here is you want to consider how much luck you have versus how effective you are. While I'm fighting with the Imakome set, I know exactly how this set works. I know how to take advantage of it. I know I can kill stuff quickly. Now, I might be able to put on the Rightful Eccentric and still kill stuff and have that extra 20 luck. But if I'm killing stuff slower than I was while I was running this set, then I got to ask myself, is the loss in kill speed really worth an extra 20 luck? So something to keep in mind with your farming. Now, obviously, besides putting uh, increased item drop rate on all of your pieces, you also want to have item drop rate and luck on both of your accessories. In particular, if you can get a Sudama Natsuki, this actually has a higher item drop rate than every other accessory. As you can see, the typical item drop rate caps out at 3.9%, while this one goes up to 48 So just a little bit more percentage we're squeezing out there. Moving on down, a Luckbringer Talisman will help you even more. You can pick this up in the Omeo tree. And then as for Guardian Spirit, we're going to want Itukuri. Itukuri comes from the submission that's locked behind Dual Sword Progress. I believe it's in Region 5. Uh, but this gives an extra 5% item drop rate and 40 luck. Now as for our soul cores, the first one, you just want something that has luck and item drop rate. Uh, it's probably going to be probably be easier to pull this off via inheriting abilities over, but they do exist as you, know, you can see right here. Beyond that, I would suggest bringing along an Otakamaru. The stats on this don't necessarily matter. The fact is this thing just absolutely nukes bosses, and especially when we're farming bigger bosses like Otakamaru himself or Shuten Doji, we want to kill them as fast as possible. When it comes to blowing stuff up, Otakamaru gets the job done. Lastly, we have a Kodama Soul Core. This is going to give us an additional 12% enhancement on those blessings, increasing our luck even further. Now, as for where you can get some of this stuff, let's jump to the map. First up, in the Awakening region, we have the Search. On New Game Plus, this will drop a guaranteed Divine Kodama Bowl. And in addition to that, this mission has a ton of Sudamas throughout the map. Every time you come across a Sudama, if you go into your items and you drop a Soul Core to trade with them, there's a chance that they can drop the uh, the, Suda or the Kodama Soul Core that you saw me using. It's completely random, it might take a couple tries, but you can go in and repeat this mission as many times as it takes to get yourself a Kodama Soul Core. Beyond that, if you want to do the Rightful Eccentric quest, that is going to be over here in the Dream Region. This is going to have you fight past a bunch of yokai along with the, the guy who uses this set, and then at the very end he wants you to fight him. Before you fight him, you can actually rest at the shrine and then fight him. If you get the pieces you want, leave the mission. If you don't, quit back to menu and come back. 
Uh, as for the Itakiri, no, Itakiri is Dream Region, or excuse me, Dawn Region. Uh, Itakiri is going to come from this mission right here, the Master of Three Evils. You have to have Dual Blade progress to even unlock this mission. You have to have done the Dual Blade Dojo quest, but that is where you're going to get the Itakiri Spirit from. Um, now, beyond that, uh, we're going to actually take a look at how I go about farming and the approach I take. So we're going to go and let's do let's do Imagawa. Imagawa is a decent one. This guy has a couple different rare abilities, a couple different smithing texts. And I've covered this in the smithing text video, but I do think it's worth kind of showcasing this again since we're on the note of you know covering all this stuff. So real fast, just to show everything with all the bonuses I have, I am sitting at 42.6% item drop rate. 215 luck and an additional 41% enhancement on my Kodama blessings. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is there is item, or is it an item drop rate yokai shift? This is another thing, another ability that you can get. And against certain bosses, that one can be pretty useful. You basically pop your yokai shift and get the item drop rate. But keep in mind, we also have mercenary strikes. So if you're not getting more than 10% item drop rate in yokai shift, you're going to be better off using mercenary strike. Now, for pretty much any mission, the gist is you're going to want to clear it up to where you can get to the boss, and then you're going to want to rest at the shrine to create a reset state. Uh, in this one mission in particular, there are a couple enemies that we need to get past before we can just freely go to the boss, so I'm just going to snipe a couple guys here. Or I'm just going to miss my shots. There we go. There we go. Let's get him, lure him on over. When it comes to the weapon of choice, I would suggest using whatever weapon you're going to be most comfortable with uh, for both human opponents and for yokai. In general, you're going to be farming more off of humans, so I think Tampa does a good job. I think Spear does a good job. I think Axe can do a good job. It's just whatever weapon you want to play with. There isn't any one weapon that is going to be a better choice when it comes to farming human opponents. Now, the whole reason I had to kill those two guys is they were the ones that were generating this fog gate right now. It's preventing me from going to the boss. Uh, on most missions, you're just going to run all the way through the mission until you're at the shrine before the boss, but here we had to do that. And now what we want to do is we want to create a world state. What I mean by that is get yourself exactly how you want to be before going into the boss fight. So we're going to get our anima nice and high so that I can use a Takamaru, and then we're going to rest at the shrine. Now we're going to pop anything we need. Sprint. Our quick change. Our barrier. And our luck talisman. Now we're just going to sprint right on through to the boss. And you'll see the basic enemies have respawned. But the enemy that's preventing us from going into the fog gate, they're no longer there. When it comes to a particular build, if you're really trying to min-max your farming, uh, ninja build is going to be a pretty solid choice. You can't really go wrong playing ninja. But the big thing is to just play a build that you're comfortable with, because you can roll that item drop rate on anything. You're killing with mercenary strike. Let's see what we got. All right, now I didn't get a rare smithing text, and that's fine. Hang on, one piece. Nope, nothing. Uh, what you're going to do is just return to the title screen at this point. And what you'll notice is when I said we created a world state, essentially what we did was we saved the game right after everything was dead. And so you can do this before any boss in the game, as long as there is a shrine nearby. Touch the shrine immediately before you would run to the boss. That'll create your world state. And then once we get back in, we'll be right where we left off with plenty of anima and ready to go. Now, while we're farming him a couple more times, uh, some other things I want to touch on. 
Uh, I believe I mentioned the Makawa set. You can get even more luck out of that set. But it is going to uh, come along with the... Uh, you, know, you have to be in critical health for it to work. Uh, there is also the set you can get from Tochiro. That's another choice. But something to keep in mind with the Tochiro set is that it's basically going to replace your Luckbringer. So if you're using the Tochiro, the one where you get Anima Gain, or um, you get bonus luck on Anima Gain, that's going to give you the same buff that we're already doing with Luckbringer. So it's just really not worth running. Additionally, we have stuff like the uh, Yokai Slayer Garb, which usually boost equipment drop rate. We don't want equipment drop rate. We are strictly going after item drop rate. And there we go. I got a smithing text. Uh, Tokugamaru. I'm guessing that's a katana or something. Uh, but you know, it, it took two tries right there. Two tries going in and farming this guy and getting our smithing text. And that's the point that I want to make here. You know, I see a lot of people in the comments that are like, you know, I farmed Kato a hundred times. I don't think he's dropping his stuff. Or I farmed this guy at least 50 times. He's not dropping his stuff. The number one thing you can do to increase drop rates is going to be preparing. So if you're going in and you're farming and you don't have drop rate rolled on every piece of your gear or you're going in and farming and you have low crappy luck, you know, you're essentially setting yourself up for failure. So roll item drop rate on all your gear, get yourself a Kodama bowl, get yourself an Ida curry, get yourself a luck bringer, even just doing those basic things, even if you're not hyper min maxed, like to the point where you have luck and item drop rate on soul cores, um, you know, you can still have good luck. We have more item drop rate on our primary bow. You know, this this has been designed around everything possible to increase my item drop. And that's why I'm able to go through the game and get all these texts as fast as possible. Um, one last thing to touch on, if you're having trouble rolling item drop rate on, make sure you're doing your Twilight missions. These reset every day. Uh, they reset at one in the morning central for me. So I get them done like the next day after, but these give you quality umbersight. And just as a general rule of thumb, when you go to the, the blacksmith and we're going to temper, you know, if I was to, to let me just take a piece of gear here, um, you know, I can see item drop rate under fabled umber site. I already have it on, so I don't need it. But usually you're going to see item drop rate under either quality or under fable. Very rarely will you see it in the regular umber site category, uh, with the exception of chests, because on chests, for whatever reason, it's considered a, a white rarity. So keep that in mind, get the umber site, and get your gear all set up. I know there's a lot to farm for in Neo, but when you actually prep for it and you do everything possible to increase your, your item chances, it's actually not that bad. Just today alone, I farmed three new, uh, three unique smithing text abilities and then the one you just saw me get right there. So either way, guys, that's going to wrap this one on up. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps a couple people that are trying to farm up stuff and they aren't having luck. And I'll see you guys next time.